The information in this video has been compiled from reports and articles by the Flight Safety Foundation, the Aviation Safety Network, the National Transportation Safety Board, Jet Swiss Aviation, Airfax, and Pilatus. The reason for this video was to summarize the probable cause of PC-12 fatal accidents in view of the recent attention to the high number of fatalities in the last three consecutive years. In 2022, there were nine fatalities from two accidents. In 2023, seven fatalities from two accidents. And thus far in 2024, there have been seven fatalities from one accident. Let me say at the outset that the Pilatus PC-12 has one of the best safety records if not the best safety record of turboprop aircraft flying today. Before we get into the numbers and probable causes, here are a few impressive statements from PC-12 media release reports. Over 2,000 PC-12 aircraft have been delivered to customers. The Pilatus PC-12 enjoys a safety record on par with twin-engine business jets. The PC-12 fleet has recorded more than 9.3 million landings. The PC-12 fleet leader, based in Canada, has flown more than 35,000 hours. The entire PC-12 fleet has surpassed the 10 million flight hours mark. And statistically, there are over 70 PC-12s in the air at any given time. Now let's get into the data. Table 1 summarizes all PC-12 fatal accidents globally. The aircraft was certified in 1994. From 1994 to 1997, there were no fatal accidents. The first fatality occurred in 1998. Since 1998, there have been 26 accidents resulting in fatalities. 16 of these accidents have been civilian accidents within the United States. Two have been military accidents, one in the U.S. and one in Djibouti. Eight accidents have been outside the U.S. in Kenya, the Czech Republic, the Netherlands, India, South Africa, France, Thailand, and Italy. Table 2 dives into the accidents in more detail within the United States, giving the registration of the aircraft, the U.S. state location, along with the NTSB probable cause. So now, here are the probable causes and findings for the PC-12 accidents within the United States, as published in the NTSB final reports. For November 451, Echo Sierra, the NTSB determines the probable cause of this accident as the pilot's spatial disorientation while turning in a cruise climb in instrument meteorological conditions, which resulted in the pilot's loss of aircraft control and his failure to recover from a resultant tight descending spiral. For this PC-12, the NTSB determined the probable cause of this accident to be the pilot's failure to maintain sufficient airspeed to avoid a stall during an instrument final approach to land, which resulted in an inadvertent stall, spin. Factors associated with the accident are the inadvertent stall spin, the pilot's failure to follow procedures directives, and clouds. For November 768 Hotel, it was the flight instructor's failure to maintain an adequate airspeed while maneuvering, which led to an inadvertent stall. For November 606 Sierra Lima, the probable cause of this accident was the pilot's incapacitation due to fatigue resulting in an in-flight collision with terrain. For this PC-12, the NTSB determines the probable cause of this accident to be the pilot's failure to maintain control of the airplane while in instrument meteorological conditions, 
following a reported instrumentation failure for undetermined reasons. For this PC-12, the probable cause was the pilot's loss of control due to snow and ice contamination on the airplane's lifting surfaces as a result of his decision not to de-ice the airplane before departure. For 128, Charlie Mike, the probable cause of this accident was, one, the pilot's failure to ensure that a fuel system icing inhibitor was added to the fuel before the flights on the day of the accident. Two, his failure to take appropriate remedial actions after a low fuel pressure state, resulting from icing within the fuel system, and a lateral fuel imbalance developed, including diverting to a suitable airport before the fuel imbalance became extreme, and three, a loss of control while the pilot was maneuvering the left-wing heavy airplane near the approach end of the runway. For 950 Kilo Alpha, it was the failure of the pilot to maintain control of the airplane while climbing to cruise altitude in instrument meteorological conditions following disconnect of the autopilot. The reason for the autopilot disconnect could not be determined during post-accident testing. Contributing to the accident was the pilot's lack of experience in high-performance, turbopropeller airplanes, and in IMC. For November 6-8, Papa Kilo, it was the pilot's failure to maintain airplane control due to spatial disorientation during the initial climb after takeoff in night instrument flight rules conditions. In the case of 933 Delta Charlie, the probable cause was the pilot's loss of airplane control due to spatial disorientation during the initial climb after takeoff in night instrument meteorological conditions and moderate turbulence. The probable cause for November 56 Kilo Juliet was the pilot's loss of control shortly after takeoff, which resulted in an inadvertent low-altitude aerodynamic stall. Contributing to the accident was the pilot's improper loading of the airplane, which resulted in reduced static longitudinal stability and his decision to depart into low instrument meteorological conditions. For 7-9 November X-ray, the probable cause was the pilot's inadequate pre-flight planning, inadequate in-flight monitoring of the airplane's flight parameters, and his failure to regain control of the airplane following entry into an inadvertent aerodynamic stall. The pilot's likely spatial disorientation following the aerodynamic stall also contributed to the outcome. For 273 Sierra Mike, 188 Papa Charlie, and 357 Hotel Echo. The final reports are still pending. So there are the NTSB probable cause and findings for the fatal accidents within the United States. Statistics indicate that the PC-12 still holds a remarkable safety record. With 26 fatal accidents and 10 million flight hours, the PC-12 has a lifetime fatal accident rate of 0.26 per 100,000 hours. A 0.26 rate compares well against the overall GA fatal accident rate of 1.02 in 2019. This is for non-commercial fixed-wing aircraft. All fatal accidents have been with a single pilot. Eight out of the 16 fatal accidents in the United States are in IMC conditions. Autopilot disconnect followed by the loss of control surfaces in many reports. You can talk about what is good, what is better, and what is best. Even with an excellent single pilot, a properly trained co-pilot will be the best. When it comes to the responsibility of carrying passengers, we should do what is best. As humans, we are not always 100%, and a second properly trained pilot will always be the best. 
High-performance aircraft require proficiency to fly safe. Recurrent pilot training covers protocols and emergency situations that prepare pilots to react calmly and safely when faced with unexpected circumstances, such as failures and severe IMC weather. A lack of manual flying skills is a growing trend in general and commercial aviation. The increase in automation and reliance on autopilot function may be a factor in aviation accidents. The lack of manual flying skills is a growing concern in recent years that extends throughout the general and the commercial aviation sectors. The FAA now believes that pilots need more practice hand flying aircraft if the industry is to be successful in reducing the number of loss of control accidents. Thank you for watching. Your comments and discussion are welcomed. Till next time, blue skies to you.